Unfortunately, nearly 30% of U.S. high school students aren't making it to graduation. And every one of us, every parent, every friend and neighbor, has the responsibility to provide the support and encouragement they need to make it through. Because we all need to see a lot more of these pictures. The issue today is the Islamic population in uh, the United States at the 21st century. And of course, we're dealing primarily with Nashville at this particular time, pointing out the diversity of uh, this population with uh, Dr. Alpha D from uh, Tennessee State University and Mr. Rashad Fabrican uh, from uh, the Islamic Center here in uh, Nashville. Of course, uh, uh, during this last segment, uh, let us have the two of you address this issue that I think is very, very important. And that is some of the uh, misconceptions in terms of uh, some of the myths, rather, and the misconceptions in terms of uh, this religion. Let's have a free go in reference to that. Let's start with you, Dr. LD. Yeah, well, Dr. Hayne, we certainly would like to congratulate you and having us on. And it could not have come at a better time because at this very hour, this very time, there's a program on public television called America at the Crossroads. Mm -hmm. And they are presenting their version of Islam, so you're giving us an opportunity mm -hmm. to present the, uh, an Islamic mm -hmm. perspective on that. And well, I think uh, the audience needs to understand that Islam is one of the Abrahamic religions. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe in, in uh, monotheism. Uh, we accept uh, Jesus Christ not as the son of God, as Christians do, but as a prophet. Mm -hmm. uh, we are obligated to study the Old Testament mm -hmm. uh, that Moses uh, brought. We are obligated to study uh, the New Testament, and we cannot be a complete Muslim. Our mm -hmm. holy book is the Holy Quran, and in the Holy Quran you will find uh, teachings on Moses and Jesus mm -hmm. and so forth. Now there are some myths out there that we probably want to comment mm -hmm. on, and we share that mm -hmm. uh, catalog of myths, and there are many. Uh, first of all, uh, there are two worlds here. One is the perception of Muslim before 9-11, mm -hmm. and then the perception of Muslim after 9-11. Okay. So on this side of 9-11, mm -hmm. I think that's where these uh, stereotypes have been mm -hmm. in intensified. First of all, I think we should know that Islam is not an Arab religion. Mm -hmm. uh, our language is Arabic because our prophet was an Arab, peace and blessing be upon him, and it mm -hmm. was revealed in, in that language. But uh, Arabs are in the minority in, in this mm. religion. They're a very mm. small group, and mm. primarily in North Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Mm. Uh, the largest population of Muslims are actually in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. uh, there are maybe 200 million Muslims, you know, in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And in terms of uh, the way things are going now, uh, when we look at uh, the news today, you see what's going on in Baghdad. Mm -hmm. You see what's going on in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And that is not the true face of Islam. Mm -hmm. Uh, these are people that are dealing with a land that is occupied, and like any other people, mm -hmm. they are dealing with occupation the mm -hmm. same way that America dealt with the 13 mm -hmm. colonies in 1776, mm -hmm. you know. And I think people need to understand it, you know, in, in that context. Mm -hmm. Another stereotype about Muslims is that we oppress women mm -hmm. uh, because the way of Mus Muslim women dress, some wear the veil, some mm -hmm. wear the hijab, the headscarf. Mm -hmm. And it's not the oppression of women, it's an uh, act of modesty. Mm -hmm. That's a part of our culture. And a lot of time, Western feminists and the Western media try to mm -hmm. encourage Muslim women to not dress mm -hmm. uh, in this modest way. But our culture is different from the Western culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, those Muslim women who strongly believe in Islam, they uh, wear this hijab mm -hmm. and they wear this particular type of dress. As a matter of course. In as, as a part of the culture. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you go back to the early years in, in the United States, the women wore lamp, long dresses, you know, like the pilgrims mm -hmm. and so forth. And uh, so in the Muslim world, you have the same thing going on. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask Brother Rashid to uh, mm -hmm. give some, uh, his catalog of myths. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you see that was great. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. There are just so many out there. The, I mean, we wouldn't have enough time to cover it in mm -hmm. just one session, but uh, when we look to war and uh, aggression and mm -hmm. intolerance and terrorism that's something that strikes us as something that's totally uh, like pulls apart from what Islam stands for. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we hear anytime one person who is committing an act of aggression mm -hmm. they associate the religious term of Islam or Muslim to that person mm -hmm. whereas if it's a non uh, someone from another faith they usually don't identify mm -hmm. that person with yeah, so, uh -huh. religion, like mm -hmm. the person and in the Virginia Tech mm -hmm. shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, and in all cases, it's, this is one thing we like to 
uh, clarify, mm -hmm. Islam is totally stands against terrorism mm -hmm. in all means, and uh, it's totally forbidden. Uh, in fact, there's a verse from the Holy Quran in the uh, fifth chapter and mm -hmm. the 32nd verse to the effect, I'll paraphrase it because there's the Arabic term, mm -hmm. but the English paraphrased is, uh, the killing of one soul is like the killing of all of humanity, mm -hmm. and the saving of one life is like the saving of all of humanity. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, when we just go back to our roots at the time of Prophet Muhammad, the teachings in the mm -hmm. Quran, the way he dealt, uh, they avoided fighting for 13 years in Mecca. They mm -hmm. were being persecuted, killed, tortured, and it was only in the last 10 years where they were able to fight back, defend themselves. Mm -hmm. And during those times, there was a strict uh, code of conduct during war, combatant versus uncombatant. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Prophet Muhammad forbade killing children, elderly, mm -hmm. uh, the innocent, um, and, uh, and uh, even burning down trees and mm -hmm. crops and buildings. These are all forbidden because oh. Islam is a re religion of peace. Mm -hmm. And uh, God mm -hmm. says in the Quran that uh, I'll recite the Arabic, La ikra hafiddin, let there be no compulsion in religion. And mm -hmm. there's another verse that's in the second chapter, in the eighth chapter. He says, وَإِن جَنَهُ لِسِّلْمِ فَجْنَهْ لَهَا فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ if they incline towards peace, then mm -hmm. you incline towards peace mm -hmm. and place your trust in mm -hmm. God. So uh, in, in terms of terrorism, uh, Islam forbids even har harming an innocent mm -hmm. soul. Wes weapons of mass destruction go mm -hmm. away. I mean, that's like uh, well, killing someone. Well, it seems that the, the, that the religion has, in a real sense, been hijacked. It has. And uh, it has, uh, it will ha it's, it's getting a, a bad reputation because all of those things that you say that, that, that well, how, how do you explain that, Dr. Well, you know, there's a history in the West. Uh, there's a book by Samuel Huntington called, called The Clash of Civilizations. Mm -hmm. And the archetypes that we are dealing with now, it's almost you have the tension between uh, the Christian West mm -hmm. and the Muslim East. And it's almost like we're skidding back to the days of the Crusades mm -hmm. because people are seeing the modern current events through the lens of the Crusades. And there, there's no such thing in Islam. Uh, jihad it does not mean a holy war. Mm -hmm. Jihad means uh, struggle, making effort. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I'm trying to solve a calculus problem, that's jihad. Mm -hmm. If I'm trying to work and trying to get money to feed my family, yes, that's jihad. Jihad. Mm -hmm. jihad means struggle, and mm -hmm. life is struggle. Mm -hmm. So jihad is life. Uh, and so people take that kind of language and say there's a holy war, there's no such thing, no wars are mm -hmm. holy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then so on the opposite side of that you have the crusades mm -hmm. and so forth. So I think that uh, in terms of that uh, conflict, you know, Islam is strictly against mm -hmm. oppression, it's strictly against uh, violence. It's a religion of peace. The, mm -hmm. the very word Islam means mm -hmm. peace. Mm -hmm. And that's the, you know, the way I would uh, mm -hmm. view that. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Mr. Park, uh, over the last two minutes that we have here, uh, why don't we allow you to uh, make a couple of statements so that we can end by uh, having Dr. Aladi sort of summarize what he believed uh, we could do, because he and uh, Dr. Baldwin, and especially your book, mm -hmm. uh, Cross and Crescent, I want, mm -hmm. want him to say some statements in reference to that. Give us some, some statements uh, about what, some of the things that you're thinking about now. A few things is uh, we really invite people to learn about Islam. We're, we're, not, we're not here trying to proselytize or trying to convert people. That's not what we just want people to be educated. Mm -hmm. and w want uh, ourselves to be represented mm -hmm. in according to the scriptures of the Quranic mm -hmm. texts mm -hmm. and what Islam stands for. Mm -hmm. And we invite, uh, we have people come to the Islamic Center mm -hmm. on a weekly basis, classes, or we mm -hmm. go, people in, ask us to share what the true message teaches. Mm -hmm. So that's all, we want to represent it properly mm -hmm. and uh, we're just so glad to be in this community. Very good. Make mm -hmm. some statements about the uh, book that you and Dr. Uh, Lewis Baldwin co-authored, uh, yes. dealing with Cross uh, and Crescent. We wrote a book uh, that came out in 2002 entitled Between Cross and Crescent. Uh, Dr. Baldwin is a Christian scholar and I'm a Muslim scholar. So we decided that we would write this book using as narrative the life of Dr. Martin Luther King and also mm -hmm. the life of Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. But the broader picture is we're looking at the creative tension between Christianity and Islam. Mm -hmm. And the main thing that we have come to understand after having written this book is that we need interfaith dialogue now more than ever. Mm -hmm. You know, the 19, I mean, the 20th century, 
as Du Bois said, uh, was about the color line. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of conversations about race. Mm -hmm. In the 21st century, I think we need to have some principled dialogue about religion, mm -hmm. because the 21st century will be the dialectics of religion. Mm -hmm. And we need to become more tolerant and more understanding of each other. Mm -hmm. And the more we can come together and have these conversations, the less mm -hmm. there will be a need for political conflict mm -hmm. or military conflict. Mm -hmm. Very good. And of course, over the last 30 seconds that we have here, uh, Dr. al Hadid and yeah. Frank Rutten, uh, let us thank the two of you for coming by and giving us that uh, excellent information. Uh, while we were unable to uh, perhaps cover all of the myths and misunderstandings and misconceptions, uh, we do, do feel that we gave a fairly good idea in terms of the difference between uh, the religion that you're practicing now and the uh, difference between the kind of religion that we see on our televisions uh, late in the afternoon. And of course, we want to thank you for that. And let us also encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.